Drone on drone violence is nothing new. The first instance that we know of was an MQ-9 Reaper in 2017, shooting an AIM-9 against another drone, taking out one of its brethren. In 2020, an MQ-9 with an AIM-9X took down a cruise missile. The 556 Test and Evaluation Squadron shot down a BQM-167 drone simulating a cruise missile. Recently, Turkey A has made the news because they have the first successful beyond visual range launch of a missile from a drone shooting down a jet-powered drone. So drone-on-drone drone violence. Uh, and it's interesting because they're using their indigenously produced active radar missile, the Gokdogan, which I'm probably mispronouncing like everything else on this video. But... Uh, it's an interesting test. We've got a video we're going to take a look at and talk about the future of air warfare. Okay, from uh, X, Rajip Soilu, who is the Turkey bureau chief, Middle East I. Although it's interesting that he's Turkey and not Turkey A. Uh, I know people are very sensitive about that. First in aviation history, Turkey's unmanned fighter, the Kizilama, Kizilelma, successfully hit another aircraft by using an air to air missile in the coast of Sinop. Uh, this jet successfully destroyed a jet engine powered aerial target using a beyond visual range air to air missile. And this is the part that's actually newsworthy. Right. We just talked about it. So there's a video. We will play the video. We will talk about the video. Let us begin. Uh, look at these Vipers, man. Good looking airplanes. Okay. So for the first time, it shot a drone shot an air to air missile with radar guidance. And there it is. That's their drone. That's their missile. So it's all their own stuff. Hit a target with perfect accuracy. Look at the Vipers chasing them around. Entirely indigenous. Baraktar. So it's the uh, Essel Sans Murad radar. Wow. Look at that thing. That's a big drone. I mean, Viper... 33-foot wingspan, that's, I mean, that's a Viper-sized drone. It's an F-16-sized drone. That's a, a massive aircraft. The Gukdagen. Gukdagen. Look how many Vipers. It's a four-ship of Vipers chasing that thing. I know. Take that back. Five-ship. Because you had a camera ship, too. So it sounds like heavy breathing. Is it the Viper guy that is talking? He's saying his speech from the back seat of the F-16 or front seat. Uh, this looks like a J-20. Look at the canards and stuff. Looks very J-20-like. And it lands. Doors to next generation aerial warfare. I wonder how many missiles this thing can carry. Because Viper 6, without any special racks or rails. It's a historic day. But, I mean, we knew this was coming, right? This was not a huge surprise. This is the way things were going. Pretty cool. They can at least carry four, according to that picture. Yeah, things have 16 size. Yeah, it's probably... I don't know if it can carry a wingtip, but at least four... Maybe six, which is, um, we'll talk about why that's important in a second. It's cool. It's a cool video. 
All right. So what do we learn? I read some of the comments and you can always tell when somebody really doesn't understand modern air warfare. I read the comments. I shouldn't read the comments, but I know a lot of people, you know, obviously they call me dogfight man or dogfight brother when China gets a hold of the videos. Uh, because we talk about air to air and dogfighting a lot in a lot of other videos because everything beyond visual range is mostly classified. So it's not like I'm going to talk about that anyway. Um, but BVR stuff has been your baseline for 20 years or more. Uh, it's not new. Um, there are scenarios where you will get into a 1v1 engagement if detection ranges get compressed and you know, you're in the short hairs or you're in a situation where uh, you're out of missiles. You know, I mean, I've been doing a defensive counter air sortie and all I had left was the gun and you got to protect the target. So you use the gun. Uh, we've seen in Ukraine, they've used the gun against drones, uh, cruise missiles, stuff like that. But for the most part, BVR has been the rule for a very long time with some exceptions. So anytime I see these drone videos, the first thing that people always, I mean, it never fails. They always go to is the future of air combat is drones because of humans can't pull G's. I always see that. And that's not necessarily accurate simply because we're beyond that era, right? Like we're, this is where we're going. We're going towards the missiles. We're going towards the drones that are somewhat or semi-autonomous with missiles and that they can do certain things. But having a drone that can pull 20 G's is not really a thing. It's not, it doesn't matter because the missile can pull 30 or 40 G's. So, I mean, you are limited in a lot of aircraft, not by the pilot, but by the aircraft itself. Fuel and stores decrease the amount of Gs available to not overstress the entire airframe. It has nothing to do with the pilot. Take the pilot out, and F-16 is still going to have the same limitations. When the tanks, uh, when there's fuel in the tanks, when there's a targeting pod on the aircraft, uh, when there's bombs on the aircraft, etc. That it, Gs just, it's a misnomer. So where these drones are going to be crucial is their force multipliers. You're getting into a scenario where this drone is now a missile truck and can either carry missiles for you, uh, like we've talked about with the F-22, where you're the quarterback and you send the drone to go target stuff away from you. You could have the scenario where uh, it defends a point and it's autonomous and you give it the rules of engagement and identification criteria and it does the work which frees up manned aircraft for other missions i see it more as the force multiplier side of things where you can send it down range um, test the enemy's defenses shoot down certain things if you need to uh that's where it's going to be very valuable because instead of commanding a four ship with 24 missiles or whatever the case may be, now you've actually effectively got an eight ship with 32 missiles. So, or, or whatever, however many this thing can carry. So that's where I see the value in this. I don't see it being fully autonomous, except in some very select cases. I think it's going to be a, you know, you're going to quarterback your four ship of drones, you know, one F-35, F-16, con, whatever, with your four drones that you are now, basically, it's it's a subset of missiles, right? Instead of, when I shoot an AMRAM, I'm basically sending a drone down range to go kill one thing. Now, I've got a drone that's got four AMRAMs or four of these indigenously produced missiles that I can send and have it target four separate things itself so it just multiplied what i can do by myself i don't think you want to take the human out of the kill chain but having this is the force multiplier and, and maybe not even uh have it directly connected to a fighter i mean you can have it with a guy on the ground now the risk of that is the data link and that's always going to be the risk is what happens when you get into a contested degraded denied environment 
where you don't have a link because it's jammed. You don't have communications with it and it needs to go do things autonomously. That is to me, the risk slash scary part is taking the human out of the kill chain. I think that'll be rare, but I could definitely see that happening in large conflicts. So yes, this is where aviation's going. I think initially it's going to be as a, you know, a, a loyal wingman, as we've been talking about, it is your four ship instead of, you know, four brand new wingmen. Now it's you and, you know, you're babysitting Hal and you don't really care what happens to Hal because you'll just build a new one. Eventually, will we see fully autonomous? Yeah, I don't know. And, and the reason I say I don't know is because look at how the designs are going. Everything is still manned. China is manning their fifth and sixth gen designs. The U.S. sixth gen design is going to be manned. I think the military planners are looking at this and going, Drones are a force multiplier. They have very good use cases, but they are not replacing anything, at least in the next two decades. Because you know, you look at the life cycle, you know, sixth gen is for you know 10 plus years ahead of us. So I don't know. I mean, good on Turkey A. This is awesome. Um, this is the first they beat Boeing. I think Boeing's about to do it with the MQ28. I think they're having a test in a couple weeks. Uh, it's not surprising. Because to shoot an air-to-air -air missile, a radar air-to-air -air missile, you just need something to target it with, radar, whether it's yours or somebody else's. Uh, you need to be able to support that missile for at least some amount of time. And then the missile's going to go do what the missile does. So whether that's shot by a drone or shot by a human in an F-16, you know, this was inevitable. The AIM-9X, though, I think actually when you start talking drones, within visual range stuff is more impressive to me than beyond visual range because beyond visual range is just sensors and, um, you know, targeting responsibilities and, and missiles that are active within visual range. You have to get a solid handoff for a target that you may not have on radar that you have to find another way, whether it's a heat source or visually, I think visually is the toughest one of all of them. I think visually would be the toughest one. Like when, when we have this drone get a gun's kill, I think that'll be a very interesting thing. But like we talked about, a gun's kill is pointless. Like we're in an era of missiles. So, you know, it's it's old school. But if you're able to shoot them far away, do that. Don't get close. Pretty simple. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.